Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Today, we have our webinar with our friends at Access Plus Capital, and he is no stranger to us, not any longer. It's Nigel Kirk, who is a seasoned financial professional over at Access Plus Capital. Today, he's going to talk to us about enterprise loans. So for those of you who are ready to really, ready to really scale up your business and need a sizable loan, this is the conversation that he's going to have today. Feel free to ask any questions you may have. And now, without further ado, Nigel, please tell us about the Enterprise Loan. All right, thank you, Rick. I want to thank you and Shara for inviting Access Plus Capital to talk to you guys today about our loan programs. Today, we'll be discussing the Enterprise Loan Program. And like Rick said, this is one really, it's one if you have been in business for a few years and you're trying to scale your business, it's the best, um, one of the best loan programs we have out there. I'm going to share my screen. Looks like it's disabled right now. Try it now. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, and you guys seeing the screen? Yep, looks good. All right, thank you. All right, today we're gonna to be discussing the enterprise loan. All right, we assist in building wealth in underinvested neighborhoods and communities. That's what we do as a CDFI. It's a community development financial institution. Really, we're created to support economic growth and opportunity in disadvantaged communities. Really, there we're mission-driven to help historically unbanked communities. Now, vision and mission is to eliminate economic barriers to financial success through fair and equitable community investment, and we do this how through trustworthiness earning trust through actions. One real thing is a lot of small, um, bigger banks, new business owners or small businesses, they don't like to deal with it. We have no problem reaching out and providing classes like we're doing today and assisting our small business owners with the education and the tools needed so they can help grow their business. Anti-racism confronts racism and corrects inequities in financial systems. I just did a loan recently for a customer. He has a janitorial business and he was buying equipment. It was a $40,000 piece of equipment that he was putting in his truck. And we did the loan. We told him, you know what, maybe you should just give the company half of the money and then give them the rest later. He's like, no, I know them. They're good. So he, we went ahead and wired the money to the uh, business. A couple of weeks later, he comes to me and he's like, hey, they gave me one of the wrong pieces. I ordered um, a piece of machinery that was worth $3,000. And instead, they gave me a four-line streamer and it was only worth $1,000. So I called up the company. They tried to dodge us for a while, but finally, I was able to talk to the owner. And I'm like, we um, provided funding for the invoice and with all the stuff that's on the invoice. And you guys provided our customer with the inferior product. We'd like, you know, it to be fixed. And he, you know, hemmed and hawed for a while. And then we kept on him. We talked to him daily. And then finally, he was like, he called up our bar and he's like, hey, get the bank off me. I'll give you the part. No charge. I'll take care of it. Sometimes businesses need a little extra help. And that's what we do. Opportunity recognizes untapped potential where others see risk. This is another <clears throat> thing came up. We had a business owner who owned a building downtown Fresno, and he was looking to help get new tenants in. And a lot of times, small business owners don't have the capital to do the tenant improvements. Sometimes it could be a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. So he had the idea he would do it, and then we'd help 
get tenants to come. Most banks wouldn't do that. They would expect a um, small business owner to provide that. But we went ahead and um, did funding to provide tenant improvements so he could help make it easier for tenants to get in to a building. And the way we look at it, it's helping our downtown community. It's bringing jobs to the neighborhood and resources for people to have. Every dream is different. Understand and consider the needs of the clients first. All business owners have different ideas. Not every idea is the same. Typically, when you go to a bigger bank, they're looking for your doctor's offices, accounting firms, and architectures, you know, businesses that they know through and through, and they know they'll succeed. They don't want any unique businesses because they don't have any historical data on it, so they don't like to take the risk. It takes a village, work together. And that's why I'm, we're here today with um, President Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce. You can't do it on your own. And that's why we partner together and we partner with other um, businesses and CDFIs and other nonprofits locally so we could work as a team to help you as a small business owner succeed. And some of the differences between the CDFIs and traditional banks. We provide access to financial products and services to local business owners and residences. We fund startups and nonprofit businesses by providing nano, micro, and enterprise loans. And we offer free technical assistance and business coaching. And what that is, is helping with business plans. It could be helping with um, financial literacy, procurement inventory controls, just base whatever businesses need to succeed, we're here to help. If we don't have the knowledge, we'll partner with one of our other institutions to help provide that and benefits to the small businesses like yourselves. Trad traditional banks are not required to really focus on underserved communities. Generally, they do not fund startup businesses or small micro business loans. They usually go after the larger loans because it's more profitable to them. They typically do work as a bridge with us to help partner with CDFIs and help customers. And they typically are less flexible and their guidelines are a lot more rigid. And here's some of our members of our Access Plus Capital team. You have myself in the upper left. I am the business development specialist for the Fresno office. I handle from Fresno County all the way up to Sacramento County. And then we have Raquel Jimenez. She handles our Bakersfield region. And our fearless leader, Pamela Mosser, she's a VP of lending out of the Fresno office, but she is in charge of lending for the whole company in the 15 counties that we operate. We have Ernest Ramirez. He is our portfolio manager. And then we have Yang He, he's our senior credit manager. He is the um, in charge of the underwriting department. And we have Buffy and Victor, they really work with our startups and they help, they also do our post and pre-TA for our small business owners. And then we have our new business development manager, David Villapajondo out of the Fresno office and he covers the same territory as I am, Fresno all the way up to Sacramento County. Right. And just understanding some of the different loan ranges we focus on. We cover, we do loans from minimum is 5,000 up to 500,000. And with exception, sometimes we do go over that 500,000. We've done as much as 1.8 million before. And from different uses from working capital, Say maybe you're a seasonal business and you need some help with payroll during your slow season, working capital comes in handy. When we do machinery and equipment, you wanna start growing your business and maybe you have to pick up some machinery that'll help make your business run quicker and we can uh, help with the purchasing of machinery and equipment or commercial real estate. You've maybe been leasing a building for a while and the owner comes to you and would like to make you an offer we can help with assisting um, of you purchasing that building or another building so you can actually own um, your place of business and not rent. Or business acquisitions. If you maybe you run a burger shop 
and your competitor is going out of business, it's an opportunity to expand your footprint. We do ac business acquisitions as well. Or even for franchisees, if you're looking to get into a franchise um, similar to a business acquisition, we do that as well. And then tenant improvements. You have leasing your building and you need some upgrades and it's pretty costly. Maybe it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. We're able to do financing to help you um, do the tenant improvements to build out. So the building would be to your specific needs. Or a letter of credit. You're looking for a building and your broker asks you to get a letter of credit to make sure because they don't want to spin their wheels if they don't know if you're financially able to buy the building. We could um, assist in getting that letter of credit for you. A refinancing high interest loans. This is really common lately. I just had another loan. Lady was paying 234% interest rate. And what happened a lot of times, business owners might be strapped for cash and they go online, start looking for quick money. We typically take about four weeks to do a loan, but some of these online, you could get money in your account in 24 hours, but it's not always too good to be true. They'll pull payments daily, weekly, and the interest rates, when you look at it, the payment itself, because it's daily, doesn't seem high, but over time, and you're making that same payment every day, that's when you can get up into over 100% interest rate. And we do a lot of refinancing for um, those high interest rate loans. We're here to help small business owners, operators. It can't be investment property. It can't be someone who's looking to just buy a building and then rent it out because that's more speculative. We deal with business owners who are actually going to be in the building and operating. In our different loans, we have our nano loan, which is $5,000 to $20,000. And that's a quick loan. You have to been in business for just a year and you could um, try and apply for that one. We could do approvals within five days for our nano loans and have funds in your account within 10 business days. Then we have our micro loans, a little bit bigger from five loan, 5,000 up to $50,000. And then our enterprise loans, which I'll be talking about today, it's over 50,000 up to $500,000. And then we also have our startup loan program where we do um, for businesses, from conception, if you haven't even made a dollar yet, we'll help you work with a business plan to create that projections and get your business on paper. And so you can start realizing it. And we work with our startup loans and that's what our business services team does. They handle working with entrepreneurs who are looking to start up a business or maybe to recently start up a business in order to qualify since they don't have tax returns, we use projections based on industry standards. And those loans typically will go up to $50,000. On a case-by-case -case scenario, sometimes we do go higher, especially if, like if you say you're going to get a franchise. We know you have a lot of support, you have a lot of backing, and a lot of knowledge and training that you'll receive. So and typically a franchise, you might need anywhere from fifty to a couple hundred thousand dollars. I mean, McDonald's is a few million dollars if you want to have a McDonald's franchise. But with, based on the, when you have that support, we're more inclined to loan a little bit more money. All right, so our enterprise loan. All right, this one we loan from $50,000 and $1 all the way up to $500,000. And like I said earlier, sometimes we do, on a case-by-case, -case, go higher than the half a million. Uh, credit score, we need a minimum of 620 for this. Enterprise loan or any loan, you could go to bigger banks as well. The more money that you're borrowing, the more documentation and the more collateral you'll need. It's a risky loan for the bank, so they want to really make sure they're um, protected. Our interest rates for our enterprise loans currently, it's 9% to 12%. It is based off of... Uh, uh, index, and that's currently what the rates are at. The terms are from anywhere from five year term up to 25 years, and the longer you're 20 and 25 years, that's for commercial real estate. And some loan uses that you can use it for working capital, tenant improvements, 
refinancing the high interest rate, like we talked about earlier, commercial real estate, business acquisitions, or equipment and purchases. The fee is a 2% origination fee based on the loan size and plus other closing costs or third-party fees. Like if it's commercial real estate, you'll have your fees from title and escrow, or we need a, an appraisal. And those sort of fees would be included that's responsible for the borrower. We do offer collateral support, um, SBA Community Advantage Guarantee. This is a great program if you're looking to do a business acquisition. Typically, we require 20 to 25% down payment. But if we get it back by the um, SBA, um, you'd only have to come in with 10%. And then we also have the state guarantee program. Um, if you fall short on your collateral, we are able to reach out to state guarantee and also CalCap, and they work with us and they have some programs. You do have to pay small fees. I know for CalCap, I believe it's $250 application fee and then two and a half percent of the loan amount. So it is a little bit more expensive if you don't have the collateral, but we are we do have resources that doesn't exclude you from being able to do the loan. We just have to look and find other means to assist us. And they also offer the small business disaster relief guarantee, which goes up to 95%. And some documentation that you'll need for our enterprise loans. Main thing is three years of tax returns. We'll need both business and personal tax returns. And then we'll also need year end or year to date financial. So income statements and also profit and loss statement. All right. And then we also need two months business bank statements and two months recent personal bank statements. as well as a personal financial statement. What personal financial statement is basically a balance sheet for you personally. It shows not what the business owns, but what you have as far as savings and also checking account, any stocks or bonds you might own, any property you might own, basically any assets you have, and then as well as um, any liabilities. So any accounts payable, credit cards you might have, or student loans, or loans for cars would go on there as well. And then it also, it basically we use that to see what a person's net worth is. Funding times for our enterprise loans typically take a little bit longer than your nanos and uh, micro loans, just because there's more documentation needed. So the review process takes a little bit longer. Typically takes four to six weeks. I would say now, just because we are a little shorthanded, that's probably closer to six to eight weeks funding time. And then if you're adding commercial real estate, you can add two to four weeks. And the reason being with commercial real estate, there's more people involved with it. You have the agents, you have the escrow company, and then we also have a lot more reports we need. We need environmental reports and we need appraisal. And so we're running on different time frames. And then it also comes back and it needs to be reviewed. So it does take a little bit longer. All right. So enterprise loans are loans that help basically support existing businesses, fund larger products. On a case-by-case -case business um, basis, we will do startups, like I mentioned, with your franchises and maybe different um, if, Maybe you have a manager who's worked at a company for 20 years. The owner's getting ready to retire, but the general manager, he's been the one running the business. He's been the one there day to day, you know, working with um, schedules, payroll, inventories. So he knows the business inside and out. We'll be more likely to lend a larger amount because that person the business is dependent on and they've been there and they have the experience. Some examples of the enterprise loans can be used for like business expansion. Maybe you've been in a building for a couple of years and you're looking to start selling more products. Maybe you want to move into a different territory so we can help with the expansion, help with more um, equipment, inventory. 
oh, you got new contracts. You got a, maybe you all of a sudden you got a Walmart and now you have to produce a lot more than you used to. So you're gonna need a lot more raw materials. You're gonna need a lot more staff and we could help you ramp up for that. Or if you're purchasing a commercial real estate building to run your own operations instead of leasing, that's probably one of the biggest we do for enterprise loans is commercial real estate. And also without commercial real estate, even though you own the building, you don't have, as long as you are in at least 51% of the building, you could rent out a portion of the building to help offset that cost of that loan. And key items again for the enterprise loans, it's loan amounts from $50,001 up to 500,000. Minimum credit score is 620. Interest rate is 9% to 12% and it is fixed. The rates are based depending on the use of loan funds, like your commercial real estate, those loans will tend to be in the nine, 10% range. And the reason being is if the borrower ever defaults on the loan, the lender has something to fall back on, the collateral, the building. So they're willing to go with the lower interest rate. And also the strength of the borrower and the guarantors factor in. Um, our rates are typically the same, but I mean, if you're dealing with someone who has 850 credit scores and has considerable net worth, the rate's going to be a little bit better than if the um, score is a little bit lower to that 620 range and maybe doesn't have the net worth and a little reaching a little bit to help reach his goals. And again, some of the financial we do need is three years tax returns and your year end or year to date profit and loss and balance sheet for the business. And then also two months bank statements for business and personal. Another key thing with your bank statements, especially when you get into enterprise loan territory, you wanna make sure your accounts are separate. So your personal account, you're only using it for personal items, you know, going to Target, going to the grocery store, buying stuff for your home. And then your business account is strictly used for your business. It's okay if you wanna, um, as a business owner, pay yourself a salary. So then you can put that money into your personal account and use funds um, from your personal account. But the business, we want to see only business transactions in there. You're paying payroll, you're paying taxes, you're paying insurance, and that sort of thing. And the personal financial statement, once again, this document helps us determine what assets and liability that you hold personally away from the business. It helps determine what your net worth is. And with our enterprise loans, as well as all of our other loans, there's no free money. Um, you need to pay it off early. You know, maybe all of a sudden you had a big contract and you made twice as much as you normally make and you don't need a loan anymore. You can pay it off and there's no penalty. Once again, some collateral support programs that we have, we have the SBA Community Advantage. And that's for like for business acquisition, you're buying a business. And the SBA 504, that is if you're gonna buy a commercial building. Typically you need 20 to 25% down for building purchases. But with the SBA 504 program, you can get in there with as minimum, as low as only 10% down to buy a commercial building, which is unheard of. Um, it's really great because even buying a house, typically you need 20% down a lot. Sometimes you can't do it lower. So having a chance to buy a commercial building with only 10% down is a great program that the SBA offers. And that is to help small business owners who maybe doesn't have the capital and access to cash to put a large amount down. And then we also offer the state guarantee support program if you don't have the collateral um, dollar for dollar. And once again, our turnaround time, it says four to six weeks, but right now we're probably more closer to the six to eight week time frame and add anywhere from two to four weeks for commercial real estate. 
ways to help improve your process in time is have a complete package. When we start out, we'll send you what's called a required disclosure list. It might seem daunting, but it's a long list of items we need. And these items help us underwrite the loan. And when we don't get all the items, it takes a lot longer because then we're waiting for the items to come in and we can't really start the process until we have a full package. So that's probably the number one way to help speed up your time frame is providing a complete package. And one of the things I like to do too for small business owners, because not everyone deals with a balance sheet or income statement all the time, we have templates that we can help, we can provide um, to you or reach out to your CPA. If you have a CPA, they have their own templates that they use. But we also assist in help filling out that documentation, whereas a bank might not. Have no problem taking you know some time out of my day to sit with a small business owner to help them take a look and figure out what needs to go on that balance sheet or income statement. Other thing, follow up with your loan op loan officer constantly. Ask questions. You know, make sure um, if like if you know you need an appraisal, have the money ready to go because that do, does need to be paid up front before we can request it. And appraisals on commercial can be pretty hefty. Typically, we try and get away with just a commercial evaluation, which is a smaller appraisal. And that the fee for that right now is typically anywhere from seven to $800. But if you need a full-blown appraisal for a commercial building, that could cost up to $2,000. Eligibility, a big thing is the debt service coverage ratio. What that is, is basically what lenders and banks look for. It's a way for us to see if the business is, has enough cash flow to pay the debt back. Basically, for every dollar of a loan existing, we want to make sure there's at least a dollar fifteen in income to pay that debt off. So if you own, a, say, make it easy, if $100,000 a month you have in debt, we'd want to see 115,000 coming in a month. And this is probably the biggest thing businesses and banks and lenders look for in qualifying a customer. And it's not, we look at the net income. So basically if you're taking your tax returns, we don't look at your gross revenues. A lot of people think that, well, I made $500,000, but then you have all these write-offs. So after all those write-offs, you have your net income. And that's what we use to qualify business owners and seeing if they can pay back the debt. There are some items we are able to add back in that like depreciation, it's not really a cost, it's imaginative. So we are able to add back, um, depreciation and also interest expense is another item we are able to add back when we're looking at someone's net income before we figure out um, if they're able to debt service and co um, cover their payments. You must be an existing business located in the 15 counties. We go from Kern County all the way up to Sacramento County and we go as far east as Inyo as far west as Monterey County, and that's the territory we currently are in. So in order to do an enterprise loan with us, you have to be in one of those 15 counties. And it has to be an owner-occupied business. It can't be an investment business. All right, so finalizing must be an existing business. You have three years business tax returns. This can include if you file a Schedule C and I would need both your business and personal tax returns. And you must be current on your federal taxes or if you're not in a repayment plan. As long as you have at least one payment on your repayment plan, that works as well. You can't have any current or open judgments, liens or bankruptcies. And a big one is unpaid child support. Best thing is have a conversation with your loan officer. And here's a success story I want to talk to you guys about. We have 
Kenyon Aman is the owner of Ammon's Design and Home Interiors here in Fresno. His customers would describe him as talented, friendly, and genuine. Kenyon truly loves what he does and brings a warm, welcoming presence to everyone that visits his store. He was able to utilize one of our enterprise loans to obtain capital um, for his business with Access Plus Capital, helped him grow his business. He was in business for a couple of years and he wanted to expand. So we were able to provide him the capital that he needed that he was able to expand his business. And we're funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration and a grant with the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. And at this time, I'd like to take any questions anyone has. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, everybody, we're going to give this about five minutes. You got Nigel right now. It's a good time. If you got any questions, so make sure you ask them those questions. You can do it in the chat or in the Q&A. I'll put up my contact information. So if anyone would like to reach me by email or by office phone or cell phone, that's right there on the screen. Okay, I do see one. Will these slides be available after the session? Yeah, what I can do, I could email the slides to Shatera and Rick and they could um, send them out to you guys. Any more questions? Okay, as always, Nigel, we thank you once again for joining us, for educating us about loans from Access Plus Capital. We're gonna close out the webinar, and as usual, this appears on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who have joined us by Facebook, we thank you as well. Nigel's contact information was made available to you. If you have any questions and you need to get to Nigel and you forgot the information, call us. We'll be glad to connect you. All right. Thank you, Rick and Stara, for having me. All right. Nigel, have a great day, and thank all of you for joining us. All right. You guys have a good day.